morning. I'd like to welcome you all to First United Methodist Church of Milshoe. My name is Jamie Davis, and I am your liturgist for the month of January. Just some quick announcements. Uh, Milshoe Mills on Wheels needs your help. So if you are able and willing, um, this is your chance to make a difference, and you can find more of that information under your announcements. Um, this week we have our Monday ladies Bible study at 9 a.m. Men's also at 6 p.m. And then Wednesday at 12, the Bible study Finding God Faithful. Um, again, I just wanted to welcome you guys and say good morning. And thank you all for joining us and for those joining us online. And I think we have one more announcement. I, d I do have one more announcement. Wow. Now, okay, <clears throat> one more announcement. I was called uh, this week by our uh, disaster uh, chairman. He's still working on some homes in uh, La Mesa, Texas, uh, the flood, I think, about a year and a half ago. He's looking for people uh, that would build teams to go and do sheetrock. Uh, if you've never sheetrocked before, and, but you'd like to learn, uh, if, you'd like, if you'll call me. Lisa sometime uh, in February so again if you if you if you don't know how and you'd like to let me know and if you do know how and you'd like to let me know okay uh, I think my number is in the bulletin if not call the office and Be uh, Becky can give you my cell number okay thank you would you stand and join us as we sing great is the Lord Great is the Lord, He is holy and just, by His power we trust in His love. Great is the Lord, He is faithful and true, by His mercy He proves His love. Great is the Lord, and worthy of glory, great is the Lord, and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord, now lift up your voice, now lift up your voice. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord, He is holy and just. By his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true. By his mercy he proves he is love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory. Great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord, now lift up your voice, now lift up your voice. Great is the Lord, great is the Lord. Great are you, Lord, and worthy of glory. Great are you, Lord, and worthy of praise. Great are you, Lord, I lift up your voice, I lift up my voice. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Okay, I tried to begin 
Okay, we're not getting feedback. Amen. That's wonderful. Amen. All right. Hey, it's good to see you guys this morning. I want you to know that uh, we're, we're still doing the offering uh, in the back, in the plates. If you are a visitor here and you're going, okay, how come they're not passing the plates here in a minute to, for offering? Right now, we're doing it in the back. As you uh, leave, you can uh, give generously to the Lord for His work, for His ministry, uh, right outside of those doors. Now, if you will... Um, we want to come each and every Sunday and, and worship in spirit and truth. We want to uh, get rid of the distractions of life, and we want to focus on the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, okay? So this morning I invite you uh, to pray with me as we do just that. Let's pray. So, Father, <clears throat> this morning we, uh, we come to you on the, on the January of maybe... Maybe some of us have a little gloominess in our hearts uh, from the beginning of the year. Maybe some of us are struggling with uh, what's going on in our culture or maybe in our own lives. Uh, I know that we see lots of things going on such as COVID and we're struggling, Father. And we come here because we, we want to worship you. We come here because we believe that you are the answer to all life. We come here wanting you to fill our hearts and replace our gloominess with joy. We come here expecting you to bring comfort to our souls. It's a high order. But God, you're the God of all creation. You're the God of the universe that spoke everything into existence. You are the God who has redeemed us by the blood and body of Jesus Christ. And you're the God that's promised us a forever forever to be with you and because of you are that God we come praising you this morning we come wanting nothing more than to worship you as you deserve in spirit and truth and so all the stuff that we allow to get in our lives in our hearts I pray father you help us to remove them and come here just seeking you I pray father that your spirit will speak to us from the youngest to the oldest Lord that that as we worship you, as we sing uh, praise to you, every word, everything that we hear, every prayer, every song, every, every bit of the message, Lord, you will anoint by your spirit in such a way that when we leave this place, we can say to those that we're with or those that we encounter uh, later today that we have been with the Lord Jesus Christ. We have been in his presence. And because we've been in his presence, we're better people. Father, I pray that you do that in our lives this morning. And then I pray, Father, that we as a church will take on the mantle of, of building the kingdom of God right here in Mill Shoe, Texas. Right, our role, that we'll fill those shoes, Lord, that we'll go out into a, 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 a town who has so many unbelievers and just find them, Lord, and, and love on them and tell them that there's a God who loves them back. God, help us as church to be a light to our community. Help us as a church to be a light to our families and help us as a church to proclaim the goodness of who you are. We need to get back to the basics of life, Father, and I pray that today you will just decide us to do just that. We love you. We praise you. We give you all glory. And Lord, we pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, if you will.
Would the children come forward? You may be seated. David taught the children's class. He thought he was going to teach again, I guess. But we've got Lori this morning. Hi, guys. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been out on the playground and there's somebody that was a little different? Yeah. And they didn't... They didn't play with really, didn't play with anybody. They just kind of stood there and watched. Didn't really get along with everybody and you just kept on playing. Sometimes we need to go find those people because just because they're a little different, you might think they're kind of weird. Do you know anybody who's weird? <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, oh, that's what it was. She was pointing at Danny. But just because you might be a little different doesn't mean you don't have anything to say. Doesn't mean you, you can't be friends. Doesn't mean you're not special. Let me show you something. Look at this ball. Does it look like a Play-Doh ball? But watch it. And it gets all pretty and glittery and, and it lights up. Did it light up? It's supposed to light up. See, everybody has their own special way. We, we, we won't do that one because it doesn't light up. Everybody has their own special things that makes them fun and makes them special and makes them fun to be around. There you go. See, everybody's that way. So just because they might be a little, someone might be a little bit different, doesn't mean they don't have something inside that's beautiful for everyone to see. You want to say a prayer? Jesus, we know that sometimes we see others standing aside and we don't always go over and include them. But we need to because everyone is special in their own way. Amen. Okay. Pick you one. Any blessings or celebrations you want to share this morning? Okay. Julie's a coming. Yes, ma'am. Today is Lewis Wayne and my wedding anniversary. We were married 67 years ago in Sudan. Today is Tyrell's birthday, Tyrell Gear, and my son-in-law, Michael Hasty. Anybody else? I just want to say a thank you for the life of Marilyn Cox and all she did for our community and uh we'll our prayers will be with her family in the days to come god is good and all the time okay they're gonna let us sing again <laughs> stand and join us as we shout to the lord my Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is no one like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty Tower of refuge and strength Let every breath All that I am Never cease to worship you Shout to the Lord of the earth Let us see Power and majesty Praise to the King Mountains bow down and the sea at the sound of your name I sing for joy at the works of your hands Forever I love you, forever I'll stand Nothing 
Let's just ponder what we just said in prayer. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. Father, this morning as we open up your word, we, we long not only to worship you, but we long to hear from you. We long to be in your presence. We long, Father, for you to, to just fill us with fire again. We long for your 
your presence to be in this community in such a way that, that lives are changed, Father, that people uh, will move back to you. We have a longing for you this morning. As a deer pants for water, so our souls long for you. And Father, as we open up your word, I just pray that uh, that longing uh, won't go away, Father, that we'll just want to take every word that we, we hear from the gospel, from your, from your word, from your Bible, Lord, and, and drink it in. That it'll, it'll, it'll enter us in such a way that it'll, it'll transform our hearts. Lord, I know that there's nothing I can say to these people that make any difference without you. But I'm here this morning believing that your Holy Spirit has something to say in and through me, Father. And so I come and give myself to you. I, I pray, Father, that you hide me in the shadow of your cross, Lord, and that you use me as a vessel of love and grace, as an instrument to speak to your people. And I pray, Father, that you help us to get back to the basics of life. So come now. Come now and speak in and through me. And I'll be careful to give you all praise, all honor, and all glory. Lord, I love you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you ever, have you ever uh, just woke up in the morning and you just have a heaviness on your soul? Maybe you just... You can't stop thinking about what you saw on TV or the things going around even in your own life or just in, our, in, the, in the, the life of our country. You ever just felt that heaviness and kind of just being overwhelmed? It seems to happen to me uh, the last couple of years in January, it happens to me. Uh, I think I have a, an understanding kind of why it does me so often. Um, but this January 2nd, I woke up uh, after the new year. You know, everybody's thinking, oh, what, it's so great to have a new year. Let's start over and all. And, and I'm waking up, and I'm, I'm not feeling any of that. January 1st is the anniversary of my dad's death. He, he died on January 1st in 1999. So I think a lot of that has to do with my melancholiness at times when I, on the new year. But I woke up this January 2nd, and... I mean, just all kinds of stuff was in my spirit. Um, I, I thought about our country and how inflation was just going rampant. You know, the prices were going up. I thought about uh, the divisiveness that's in our country. And I, I know that when I was growing up that we had that, but it seems like it's worse even now. I thought about how we were so quick to cancel each other out. You know, I see that all the time. The cancel culture is kind of, if you don't disagree with me, you're going to just, people are going to say something about me until it's just like uh, literally eliminating me out of life. And that happens so often now. I see divisiveness between uh, people of different color more than I used to. And, and I mean, in politics, you, you know, if you, if you have a certain uh, political side and you have a uh, a person that you're, you're voting for or, you, or you're going to vote for on your, on your car and the other person uh, has another feeling. I mean, it, without knowing each other, we, we, we literally eliminate that person. And then I got to thinking about uh, uh, what's going on in the church. You know, in the, in the church at Littlefield, I, I, I look back at the records and I think about all the, I, I see how the church used to be so full of people. And I've noticed in my 25 years of ministry, uh, it's not just my church because then it would be me, but uh, I noticed all around in churches there's, there's numbers that are dwindling all the time. There are people that just don't feel like church is important. Worship is important. The fellowship of believers. And I mean, I'm waking up and all this stuff is going on in my spirit, you know, and I'm uh, it was icy that day, and I went and put ice on the walk and, and got ready for church, and we had very few people show up. I understand all that. But in my spirit, there was still that just gnawing sensation. There's just a feeling of awfulness. And as I worshiped that morning, 
God began to put a word in my heart. Not only did he put a word in my heart, but he put a song in my heart. And I want to share those, uh, that word and that song with you a little bit this morning because it's something that I, I told Angela and Justin about and we decided we'd preach around that for the month of January. Of course, Angela and I ended up getting positive for COVID, so we kind of had a little mess up there. But I want to share with you a little bit about that word and that song. You see, when... When I was going through those, and, and then maybe you're, maybe right now you're going through some of that in your own world. Maybe uh, there's something with COVID or something that's going on in your family that's just bringing you down. And I would tell you that what I, what I came to understand was that God was saying, you're at a crossroads. You are at a crossroads. And then he gave me a piece of scripture uh, that I would hope, if you have your Bibles, I'd hope that you would turn to it. And not only turn to it, but grab you a pencil or a pen and circle it. And every time you get those feelings of being melancholy, every time you get this uh, idea that the whole world is unraveling before your eyes and you get this overwhelming feeling in your soul, remember that you are at a crossroads. And then if you're at that cross crossroads, you, you're going to find uh, what, the, what the Bible says about crossroads. Jeremiah 6, 16. Jeremiah 6, 16. If you have your Bibles, open it there. And if you open it there, if you're there, say amen. I got an amen. Nothing happened, right? Did y'all see that? There was an amen in this church and nothing happened. It's, it's okay to say amen. So Jeremiah 6, 16, you there? Ah, oh, we got some more amens. Looky there. Nothing happened. Not there yet, okay? I'm a, I'll wait for you then. Since you got your Bibles, I'm going to make sure you're there before we start. Just say amen. Jeremiah 6, 16. When you're there, say amen. All right. Considering when we get to a point to where we feel we're at a crossroads, this is what the Lord says, stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. That's the piece of scripture that God gave me. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and Walk in it, and you will find rest for your soul. I came to realize from that day till the day I'm standing before you that we're always at a crossroads. No matter what is going on in our lives, uh, just about every day there's something negative. And if we allow ourselves to focus on that negative, we can get to where we're at a, a crossroads, and, and we if we don't watch out, we could get paralyzed and not do anything. Literally think that the world is going to swallow us up. That's not what this scripture teaches us to do. I want you to think about this. We've had crossroads before. We've had the crossroads of uh, the Vietnam War. Maybe if you uh, were around back then, maybe you can remember a time in your spirit where you, you woke up and you were just overwhelmed by what you were seeing on TV, overwhelmed by what's going on. Maybe it was uh, the civil rights movement and how uh, you watched on TV how uh, people were treated with dogs or you, or you just had these feelings that were, our nation was going to just be ripped uh, in half. We're always at a crossroads. Look, look at World War II. Can you imagine being uh, a, a young person in that day and time and watching uh, Hitler rise in power and all the things that were going on and began to think, and our world's never going to be the same. We're gonna, everything's going to change, and he's going to take over the world, and we're all doomed. I mean, a lot of people probably thought that was it. We're at a crossroads. World War I. Um, the Civil War. Can you imagine living in those days and times and thinking, how could we get to a point 
So where we're fighting against each other, killing each other in our own country. Maybe it was, uh, what about whenever we fought for our freedom? There was a time, I bet, when, when everyone that was here in, in what would later become America would think, we're not going to make it. England's going to win, and we're, we're always going to be subjugated to this tyrant and taxes and all this stuff. We're always at a crossroads. Generation after generation after generation, people growing up, living, they're always at a point that where somewhere in their lives they get to this place and they just get overwhelmed. And here the Lord is saying, I have something to tell you. I have something to tell you that's very, very important. I want you to go and I want you to stand at those crossroads and I want you to look. Ask where the good way is. Ask for the ancient paths and walk in it. And you will find rest for your soul. So that's the scripture that I was given. When you think about that particular piece of scripture, you think about Jeremiah and you, and you hear uh, him saying, uh, stand at the crossroads and look, ask for the ancient paths, ask for the good way. And Jeremiah was a prophet just like Isaiah was a prophet. And we, we know because of what Christ did, and we, we had that lesson uh, weeks before, right? About who Christ was, the, uh, the wonderful counselor, uh, almighty God, uh, everlasting father, prince of peace. We, we learned that Jesus checked all of those boxes, so we know that in him lies the answer. He is that ancient path. Walk in it. He's asking us to allow Jesus Christ to uh, come and open our eyes, if you will, to the reality of who he is. Now I want you to go to another piece of scripture, uh, another prophet, Isaiah. We, we talked about him before. We know when he, uh, when he uh, prophesied 800 years before Jesus arrived, we know that he said, here's what it's going to look like, this Messiah. And then in uh, Isaiah chapter 42, if you will turn to Isaiah chapter 42, he kind of talks more about this Messiah and kind of what he's going to look like. Okay? And so I'm going to read a little bit to you. I'm going to kind of skip around in Isaiah 42. It says, and this is God speaking to us. Remember that the prophet hears from God. He hears what God has to say to his people. Then he goes and tells the people what God says. And so here's what God said through the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. Okay, so if you're worried about things going on in our nation then you find right here the ancient path of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. He will not shout out or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break. And a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his teaching the islands will put their hope. This is what the God, the Lord, says. The creator of the heavens who stretches them out, who spreads out the earth with all that springs from it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. You see the comfort that's coming from God. I will keep you and, and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles to open the eyes of the blind to free captives from prison and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place and new things I declare before they spring into being. I announce them to you. So Isaiah was prophesying about an ancient path. Just like Jeremiah was prophesying. One who had already existed, but one who would come. And that we know that that one 
is Jesus Christ. And it says in verse um, 7, he's going to open the eyes to people that are blind, to free captives from prison. Now, I'll ask you this question this morning. Is that all Jesus did? He healed people that was blind, but there's just a few stories about that, right? He, I don't remember any stories where he went in uh, and released everybody from jail. Could this be that it was talking more spiritually than it was physically? That he's going to end the blindness, maybe the people who didn't understand that God existed, that didn't understand that God loved them? This Messiah was going to be one who ended the blindness. How many of us sing that song, Amazing Grace? I once was lost, was na but now I'm found. Was what? Blind, but now I see. When you sing that song, was anyone in here blind? Physically? No. What that song is saying is I was blind spiritually. Somehow or another, I couldn't make everything work. I couldn't fit in this understanding of a God who loved me and a God who existed in the, in the form of a man named Jesus Christ who came, who taught, who, who died for sinners and was resurrected from the grave. But we know that is the truth. We have been given our sight. I once was lost but now I'm found was blind, but now I see. That's a great grace, right? That's a great thing to celebrate this morning. But there's more in this piece of scripture in, in 42 that, that kind of brings a little mystery. And the more is found in uh, verse 16. And I'm going to go back and read 14 through 16. For a long time I kept silent, that's God, I've been quiet and held myself back. But now, like a woman in childbirth, I cry out, I gasp and pant. And he says this, I will lay waste the mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. That, did he do that? No, again, that's, that's a spiritual thing. He's going to change everything. I will turn rivers into islands and dry up the pools. And then he says this crazy thing, I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn their darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. So earlier he talks about giving sight to the blind. Now he's talking about leaving the blind. What does that mean? That's where the song comes in. And now you guys may, you go, well, Danny, what in the world are you smoking? How did you get all that together? Well, I don't know, but it fits for me, okay? The scripture, the ancient paths, the crossroads, and the song. And here's the song. It was written in 1992. It was about the time, this happened about the time that God really began to open my eyes to who he was. My life changed in a dramatic way. Uh, I went from very self-serving, very self-thinking to uh, an understanding of Christ. And in those years, I, I quickly grew into the, a place where he called me into ministry. So it was a, a really special forming time for me. And this song was part of that time. It's called The Basics of Life. And I want to I want to read to you uh, uh, the words, but I want to us to focus on the course for the next several weeks. The words go like this. We've turned the page for a new day has dawned. We've rearranged what's right and what's wrong. That was back in 1992, you see? They were the crossroads too. too. We've rearranged what's right and what's wrong. Somehow we've drifted so far from the truth. Anybody believe here that we've drifted far from the truth? So far from the truth that we can't get back home. And then he has this lament. Where are the virtues that once gave us light? Where are the morals that governed our lives? Someday we will all awake and look back just to find what we've lost. And then he, he sings this chorus. We need to get back to the basics of life. A heart that is pure. 
a love that is blind, a faith that is fervently grounded in Christ, a hope that endures for all times. These are the basics. We need to get back to the basics of life. The newest rage is to reason it out. Just meditate and you can overcome every doubt. After all, man is God, they say. God is no longer alive. 92. That feeling. The feeling was we is at a crossroad. And he says this. He changes everything. He, he's lamenting the fact that, that they, every, everyone thinks that God is no longer alive. But then he says this. But I still believe in the old rugged cross. The ancient path. And I still believe there's hope for the lost. And I know the rock of all ages will stand or changes of time, through changes of time. We've let the darkness invade us too long. We've got to turn the tide. Oh, and we need the passion that burned long ago to come and open our eyes. There's no room for compromise. We need to get back That is blind, a faith that is fervently grounded in Christ, and a hope that endures for all times. We need to get back, we need to get back to the basics of life. Oh, that song plays in my heart. And I know that God put that in my heart that day because he wanted me to remember that when I'm at a crossroads, I need to always stand in the crossroads and look for the ancient path and ask for it and walk in the good way. And folks, if you're in that situation today, maybe look at the crossroads and then just take these four basic things. Start asking God for a heart that is pure. Justin talked about that, and it's, it's that way, if, if you want, go to Psalm 51 and, and just, just say that. Create in me a pure heart, oh God. Understand that we have allowed some of this in our lives, and so we just, to get back, we just, all we got to do is just change the course a little bit and seek that heart that is pure. But what about a love that is blind? When Justin and Angela and I were splitting out which we, what we were going to preach about, they said, Danny, you take that. And I said, oh, that'd be easy. I was like, whoa, that's not so easy. But I think Isaiah 42 is a, is a piece that will help you understand that. You see, what I really believe that it means to when, it, when we hear the word, words love that is blind, we have to... First, look at Isaiah 42 and see that at one point we, we needed to end the blindness. We need to see who God truly is. We need to learn something. But the second part of that in Isaiah 42 is we need to unlearn some things. I want you to think about your life. Think about the people that molded you, the, your parents and grandparents, people, teachers, all this stuff. Uh, how did you learn to love? And as I think about that this morning, I can't help but think about, usually I learned to love by what I saw. Okay? What I saw first. Remember when you are a little boy or a little girl and you started getting of the age and you saw the other sex and you began to be uh, attracted to them? Maybe you even decided you loved one of them. It's usually based on what you saw. Usually based on good looks. That's how it started. Uh, have you, you remember how you decided whether or not you loved food? It's usually what you saw. When you were a little kid, I, uh, I am, and I was, and I remember my kids, and now their kids are the same way. They, they see things, and they automatically, I don't want that, Right? If it's green, I don't, I don't like that at all. You know, if it had sugar in it, oh, I love that. It, it started with what you saw. How come our churches forever have been split? Because 
somehow or another we, we had this idea that if, if someone is a different color, we, 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 we get rid of them right away. We, don't, we want, don't want to be a part of being around them. Hispanics, black, and it goes both ways. You go to, uh, who was it, Campolo, I believe, that said that church is the most segregated hour in all of humanity. And it's because of what we see and, and, and what the scriptures are saying is sometimes we need to unlearn things. He says, I will lead the blind by ways they have not known along unfamiliar paths. I will guide them. Maybe it's not color. Maybe it's, uh, maybe, maybe you grew up like it. I did. Whenever I saw somebody with tattoos, I was like, ooh. Ooh, those people just got out of prison. They're going to kill me. You know, and so, I mean, without knowing anything about them, I didn't want to be around them. Maybe it's people with piercings. Maybe it's people of a different political nature. I mean, we have all kinds of reasons, and we need to unlearn them. A basic of life is a love that is blind changes everything. It's unfamiliar to us. We need to get back to the basics of life, a love that is blind. I went to a book signing of uh, my high school uh, teacher and, and coach. He later became a principal, and I mean, he's done amazing things. He finally wrote a book, and there's all these stories. Anyway, I surprised him at his book signing. Went up there and put my book down, and he, he looked up and, and started to sign something. He looked up again, and he looked at me for a second and went, what are you doing here? And I said, Coach, you made such an impact on my life. I wanted to be here for you. And I mean, it just blew him away. And my wife and I, Cheryl and I sat and, and just, he wanted to go eat afterwards. So we sat and watched this book signing. And it was an amazing thing. And for you teachers and principals in the room, you know, I want you to know that your life's work is, is an amazing thing. And you, sometimes you don't realize it. But as I watched, I saw people as just such an eclectic group. Can I use that word, eclectic? Which means all over the place, right? You had people of different color, people of different ages, people with tattoos, people dressed nice. I mean, all kinds of people coming up. And every one of those people were affected by this man's love. A love that I think was truly blind. He just cared for kids. And as I was driving home, I was just celebrating who he was. And, I, and one thing that hit me hard was we were at supper, and he said, what happened to you, dude? And he said, you never came back home. You never, never checked in with me. And, and then I began to think, yeah, because I was so into myself that I didn't continue to work on the friendships and relationships that I had. I wish that I had continued that friendship with him. You know, but for years it was separated. Why? Because all I wanted and all I thought about was myself. So I'm driving back home and I'm having regrets like that. And then I go further, right? I start thinking about all the kids that, that his life touched that were my friends, all these people that I had contact with in high school. And, and you know, I tried, to, I tried to be friends with everybody, but... As I grew older, it just seems like I, I separated myself more from this person, this person, and that person. Why? Because it was all my selfishness. If they couldn't help me achieve a certain place, I didn't need to be around them. That's hard to say to you. It's not a good thing. And I'm driving home that five hours, and I'm having these regrets. And you know what I said in my spirit? Man, I wish I could go back. I wish I could go back to some of those people that I really liked and cared about and, 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 and keep those friendships to now. I wish, I wish they knew me the way I am now and how much I want to love people no matter who they are, no matter what color they are. I wish I could go back. Now, I don't know about you, but maybe in your spirit you're thinking, some of you may be thinking, mm, man, I wish that too. Well, there's nothing we can do about it except for one thing. And this is what I want you to hear this morning. I want, I want to close with this. I want to close with a story. The story goes, uh, a man, he's single, he's by himself, and he's going to the airport, and he, he sits down, and he's waiting on his plane, and, 
and he, he sees this family come in, uh, the family of a, of a mom, uh, a little one-year-old uh, girl, and she's carrying the one-year-old, and, and then a three-year-old toddler, she's just running around, and I mean, she's going, hey, hey, stay close, all this stuff, you know, and then another seven-year-old boy. And they're walking in, and, and you can, he can tell right away that they're not there to fly out. They're there to pick someone up. And so he's watching them. I mean, they're just bouncing off the wall. And the, the plane comes, and all the people begin to come out. And, and you can see this family. They're just tense with excitement, looking and looking. And finally, there he is, there he is. And they, the guy looks, and there through the door comes this man, and he's trotting to his family. Big smile, beaming smile on his face. And he, he gets to the, the boy first, the little seven-year-old boy. He picks him up. Hey, partner, how you doing? And he starts kissing him on the cheek. And, oh, I loved you. I missed you so much. And the boy's kind of, oh, I missed you too, Dad. And kind of, you know, embarrassed a little bit. And he, he puts him down. Says, Good to see you. I missed you so much. And he grabs a little three-year-old. And he whirls her around, holds her close. And he's kissing her. And she's just laughing. Daddy, I missed you. And I love you. She's kissing him. She doesn't care. Who else is there? She's just loving on her dad. Then he takes a little one-year-old baby, and I mean, he holds in. She's just yelling whatever, you know, all kinds of stuff, and, and getting kissed, and she's just having the greatest time smiling and laughing. Then he gives the baby to the seven-year-old boy and grabs his wife, and he holds her real tight and kisses her and says, oh, how much I missed you. I love you so much. And he's looking at her. I mean, this, this face is just amazing. And the guy's watching all this, right? And he goes, man, how long have you been gone? The guy never takes his eye off of his wife. He's just looking at her with love, and he says, two days. <laughs> two days? That's it? That's, you've just been gone two days, and you have, this is your greeting for two days? And he goes, man, I wish I had a marriage like that. And the guy finally took his eye off of his wife and his kids, and he looked at them. And he said, don't wish, choose. Don't wish, choose. We're at a crossroads. Maybe everything looks bleak. We're called to go out and stand at the crossroads and ask for the ancient ways, ask for the good ways and walk in it. We can't wish about things that, that we could change in the past. We can't wish for things to change in the future. But what we can do is choose. We can choose to get back to the basics of life. Choose to get back to a place where our heart is pure, a heart that is pure, and a love that is blind, to unlearn things maybe. Maybe it's, it's time that we, we start praying and believing that, that people is going to come back in this church, and maybe they won't look like us, but it won't matter. Because a love that is blind is what God is calling us to. He's, he's saying, I'm going to take you around, I'm going I'm to guide you around as though you're blind. Ways that you don't know, unlearning things along unfamiliar paths, I will turn the darkness into light before you and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake you. A heart that is pure, a love that is blind, a faith that is fervently grounded in the Christ Jesus that we all believe in. And I hope that endures for all time. These are the basics. And I guarantee you every one of us can understand those basics. Write them down. Pursue them. Ask God to guide you. Ask God to direct you. Ask God to redirect your soul. To transform you. And you'll be walking in the ancient path. The good way. And he will give you rest for your soul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we sing our last hymn this morning, I invite you always uh, to the altar. If you're here this morning and somehow you have ducked God forever, and you've never really given Him your heart, today's the day that can change everything. You can give your life to Christ. Maybe you've kind of strayed away. 
Maybe you need to rededicate your life. This altar is for that. Maybe you have some kind of prayer that's going on, some crossroads you're at. You can come to this altar and you can seek the ancient path and you can find rest for your soul. I offer you the altar. Will you come? I think it's always a neat thing to see how God does things. Uh, the music team did not know, had no idea that I'll be leading a walk uh, this next weekend. And the scripture theme of that uh, particular walk is, uh, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I ask, ask that you, if you don't mind, pray for us as we do uh, the Lord's work next Sunday. But uh, I also ask that you uh, think uh, and meditate about what was said here this morning. Think about the crossroads you may be in. Think about the basics of life and just simply choose. Choose those basics of life and you will find rest for your soul. Go forth in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit go with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Oh